So a few months ago, I came across an article with information that truly shocked me and made me sad about the state of our food supply and how it plays into how we contribute and manage viral outbreaks. Now, my intent is not to scare you or to sensationalize the subject, but I'm very much concerned that this information doesn't seem to be getting much attention in mainstream media. Because I think if it did, maybe there'd be more pressure on the powers that be to do more than what they are, especially when it comes to some of the farming practices that are quite honestly disturbing. It's migration time again, and I wanted to share some details about avian flu or bird flu, or in the case of the United States, specifically H5N1. As we navigate our day-to-day -day lives, it's so easy to overlook threats that can have devastating consequences. And why should we be paying attention? It's not a threat to humans. I mean, it's not affecting egg prices or food prices or making our pets or even us sick. That is sarcasm for those of you who don't know me well enough yet. But I'm here to tell you that bird flu is one issue that deserves our focus, and I'm about to show you why. As a reminder, I am a scientist, a physicist. I'm not a virologist or biologist, but I do have medical and a lot of biology education in my background. Now, there's more types circulating out there than H5N1. There's an H7 variant that's wreaking havoc in Australia right now. But I wanna talk specifically about H5N1 since it has been at the forefront of my mind for the last two, close to three years. I watched as story after story came out about migratory birds spreading bird flu to poultry farms. And I'm sure some of you have heard about that as well. And for those of you who don't know, it has a mortality rate of close to 100% in birds. It isn't easily transmissible to humans, and there's been no human-to-human -human transmission reported at the time of, that I'm recording this. There is, however, um, now a H5N1 case in humans in Missouri involving no known animal contact. But the mortality rate in humans when transmitted from birds to humans is 55%. Again, these are based on reported cases. I suspect the rate is lower than that, but that's the statistic everyone is working with because that's all the information we have right now. I could go on a tangent about statistics, but I promise I won't. Then I saw H5N1 move from birds to mammals and mammal to mammal transmission with devastating results. Birds to raccoons, cougars, bears, mink, and seals. Specifically, the decimation of the elephant seal pups in Argentina, where the 2023 breeding season saw a 96% death rate in surveyed areas. During this time, domestic cats and dogs were also becoming infected. And by early this year, 2024, the virus was now in dairy cows, and it's still spreading and more and more humans are exposed and becoming infected. Luckily, the transmission from cows to humans appears to result in a much milder form of the disease. But at what point over the last three years did anybody say, what are we doing to stop the bleeding here? Then I saw this article and I've been stewing ever since. When I first read this headline, I was tired and I thought it meant farms were feeding cows ground up chicken parts, like leftover ground up chicken parts. And I was upset to say the least about that, thinking how are you going to feed an herbivore meat? We're all aware that most large scale operations tend to feed their livestock appalling food. But what I read was even worse if that's possible. In fact, they are feeding cows what is known as poultry litter. And what is poultry litter, you may ask? Poultry litter, by definition, is a mixture of poultry excrement, spilled feed, feathers, and bedding used in poultry operations. So all the nasty crap, literally, that's on the floor of a chicken coop, if you want to call that what they live in, a chicken coop. It's banned in Europe, but it's allowed in the States. Seriously, y'all, this is what they're feeding cows. 
I don't care if it's been baked, sanitized, whatever, a cow's diet should not have this in it. Now, am I saying this is how H5N1 was transmitted from birds to cows? No, I couldn't tell you how it's transmitted to cows. Is it possible? Sure. Probable? I don't know. But it certainly begs the question, what are we doing? All I've ever heard is that bird flu is a low threat to humans. Okay, I get that. We certainly don't want to panic and everyone is very fatigued over COVID, but seriously, it is already a threat to humans. Aside from the higher mortality rate than COVID, this has had a significant impact on us. It has led to higher chicken and egg prices, if not a downright lack of supply and a reduction in milk and cows. Not to mention the very cruel way we treat or rather dispose of those animals when they're infected. This is not about whether you do or do not eat meat or animal products. I do. I am not a vegetarian, nor am I vegan, but I am very mindful of where my food comes from and I try not to contribute to the factory farming industry. I also know that it's not easy or even possible for some to even have a choice where they get their food from. But this virus has revealed so much about the lack of care and concern over other human beings, the animals involved and procedures, all in the name of safeguarding profit. I take issue with the USDA here as well. What other government agency is tasked with not only regulating agriculture, but also promoting it. We clearly have a broken system that puts your health at risk. Now, <laughs> I don't wanna be that person who tells you how you should live your life. And I really don't wanna be a Debbie Downer. I wanna present a positive message. And my channel really is about how to help you do things that maybe you felt helpless doing before or thought you, you couldn't do. And that is my message. I truly believe that collectively we can change how things are done, even if it's just by changing one thing. Maybe you only buy free range eggs or grass fed beef. And even if you can't do that, because sometimes that is asking a lot, I think simply being aware of these things is just as important. Get the word out. And it could be that one day, food that is better for us and our environment will be the standard and not the exception. I see it happening already, but like everything else, it can take a lot of time. And I know some of you probably have theories on why this is happening, but what really matters is that it is happening, no matter the reason. So let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I am prepared for some of the thoughts I may get. Uh, all right, rant is over. Thank you all so much for sticking with me in this video. I know it's not a, it is educational, but it's not my standard teaching moment, and it's been on my mind for quite some time. So thank you, and thank you for being here with me on Tater Town. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you can see more videos that will help you do those things you never thought you could.